19th of October 2024. John Hammond coming to you from Norwich, UK. It's early evening here. I'm in a supermarket car park. I've come to check for the bargains this time of night, which is a good way to get food. I call. I look at on. I look at it like hunting for good bargains, um, saving uh, an appreciable size of money. Half price sometimes. Sometimes it comes down to ten percent of the value, and it's the end of day produce that they have to get rid of. And um, instead of going to the food waste mountain, so to speak, landfill or burning it, which is an obscene thing to think about in these days. Uh, supermarkets have been encouraged over the years to give this stuff away at the end of the day to charities, but to offer customers just before the store closes an opportunity to get very good quality food in this particular um, wait, um, supermarket, I nearly said the name then, this particular supermarket, very high quality food, very high prices, but when it's on when it's reduced, it's very good value for very good food. So that's why I'm here this evening. Um, if you saw the last video, one of the comments there um, by a person called Scott Theo, um, I wonder if it's the Scott I know from Norwich, UK. Well, Scott Theo said about Freemasonry, the last video subject, Freemasonry is a code word I dare you to say the truth. I know you can't without getting banned. God bless you. Well, many years ago, I know of a man who was a Freemason. And he was delivered from the evil of Freemasonry. And he was indeed bold enough to talk about his testimony at a men's breakfast. 30, 33 years ago, this man was at a breakfast table, a monthly breakfast, all that time ago, and I would call it a proper men's breakfast with proper speakers, proper men's subjects, of course, focused on Christ, focused on God, Jesus, the Holy Spirit, of course, a proper Christian men's breakfast in a proper Christian church building of a proper Christian denomination. And remember, this is 30, 33 years ago, and uh, the state of the Christian church in Norwich, UK, uh, was far more authentic, if that's the right word, authentic in terms of Christianity, the creed, the evangelical view of life, so the late 80s, early 90s, we're talking about, the Evangelical Alliance came into being in, in uh, England, a form of churches of, of the evangelical type, Bible-believing evangelical churches joining in an alliance, a body of people saying, yes, we basically agree with each other, that uh, what we know is true about our God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, and the Bible, we know this is true, and they formed an alliance of believers, if you like, disciples of Christ, ordinary people, church leaders, and even church groups, uh, uh, as a person, if you like, as a person, the, the group, the organization joined the alliance. And it wasn't a political group. It was a group of Christians, if you like, saying we are a type of Christian and we are evangelical and we're in an alliance. Now, I believe they're still going, although their remit would have changed many times over the last 30 years. So this is background to the fact that at this particular men's breakfast 30 33 years ago they were part of a evangelical movement of christian churches who put on these events of men's breakfast to win men to christ and that is the backdrop so this particular man 
went to that breakfast monthly and was accepted and of course talking at the tables about our testimony this is what we're meant to do we're meant to break bread with one another and every time we break bread to remember our Lord Jesus Christ and give thanks not just for the physical bread but to give thanks to God the Father for sending his son to die in, in my place, in our place, every time we break bread. Every time. doesn't matter if it's a breakfast or a lunch or an evening meal or any time during the day you meet together, you can break bread before you start eating your meal. You break the physical bread and you recognize the enormous act of sacrifice by God the Father of his only begotten Son, not to mention the sacrifice of Jesus himself, fully human, to the will of God his Father as his only begotten Son. And the mystery of that Father, Son, and Holy Spirit that God suffered in every way. Jesus suffered in every way. From the moment of his birth, he became conscious, if you like, at 12 years old, exactly who he was, and he would be conscious of his suffering from that point of resisting sin personally. 12 to 30 and then those, through those three years of resisting sin, resisting evil, every day he woke up and eventually he knew he was going to be lifted up onto the cross. And he suffered those three hours on the cross of his suffering, tempted in every way, called down legions of angels to wipe out everybody standing there in their sins everybody every single human being because the sins their sins my sins your sins put jesus on that cross but jesus knew he had to go through that final temptation if you like brutally crucified nailed bleeding, tortured, whipped. He went through it all because of the will of God the Father. For me, for you, for all the men at that breakfast 30, 33 years ago, the men at that table were told by this man that I'm an ex-Freemason, said this man. Once I was in darkness of Freemasonry, but Jesus set me free, said this man. And there was awkwardness, not just at the table, but in the room. Because this man was bold enough to say that Freemasonry was not just a false religious brotherhood, a form of religion, an exclusive club for men, but that Freemasonry, this man said, was satanic, Luciferian, the Illuminati. And of course, uh, if people weren't in that group, in that movement, it all seems a bit of a conspiracy theory because it's occult and secret and people didn't know 30, 33 years ago <clears throat> what it was about. <clears throat> <clears throat> excuse me nowadays you can go on the internet ex freemasons for christ just put those words in your search engine you'll find testimonies from people who once i was in darkness now i am in christ born again cleansed by the blood of the lamb delivered from all evil for god's kingdom is within us so this man was bold enough to give his testimony at the table to other men. 
And of course, men's breakfast is not just about inviting the converted in for a lovely breakfast. It is to bring people to Christ. And we must never, 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 never lose that sight of that calling to bring people to Christ. I'm not bringing people to your church. I'm not bringing people to your breakfast clubs, your luncheon clubs, your alpha courses. I'm not bringing people there for you to convert them to your religion. If I'm bringing people to your church meeting, your church groups, your church events, I'm bringing them to Christ. I'm bringing them to Christ. If I send people to your local churches, I'm sending them to Christ. The Spirit of the living God is in us. And we have encounters with people wherever we go, Trevor and I, and my wife and I, and whoever it is I'm with and myself, we have encounters with people in cafes, on streets, in car parks, and we will always point them to Christ. That is the work of the Holy Spirit within each one of us to point us to Christ within. What is Jesus saying? When we pray out loud or internally, we internalize our prayers, we come to a point of a question. Often God says, what do you think? How do you feel? What do you think the answer is? I'm remembering right now Ezekiel. Can these bones live? And Ezekiel said, Sovereign Lord, you know. You're asking me? But you know. Jeremiah, what's that man doing with the clay? Well, Lord, you know he's making a pot. You're asking me what that man's doing with that clay? Well, he's making a pot. And he got marred. And then the man made another pot out of the, the clay. He reformed that pot. And, and God said to Jeremiah, can I not do, with, do that with my people? I was forming them into a vessel. It went wrong and I pushed them all down again. I pushed all the lumps of clay down again, put some more water on the clay and formed the clay into another vessel. And that's God's hand on our life, forming us every day, every hour, every minute, even every second as necessary. So back to the story. The man went to this breakfast once a month. And part of his going there, the Lord used him to tell the truth. To tell the truth about the testimony. Once I was, now I am. And this went on for a few months. And then the man went back to uh, the breakfast for the following month. And the elders took this man to one side, away from the body of the group, into a, a private small room. And yes, you guessed it. They banned this man from ever coming again. Because he told the truth about the Freemasons. And it was explained to this man uh, by an, an elder and the minister, the official minister and one of the elders. It was explained to this man <clears throat> how he had upset one of the elders personally last time because the elder was a Freemason. And the elder was insulted to have his charitable brotherhood group called into question that it was of the devil. And we know, we know, we know, we know that Freemasonry is not of Christ. A Freemason got exasperated with me in a market town in East Anglia, just north of London, and I was telling him the truth about his Freemasonry movement, and he was exasperated with me. He said, look, Jesus has nothing to do with Freemasonry. And I turned to Trevor and I said, did you hear that? Out of his own mouth, he's told us the truth. 
Jesus has nothing to do with Freemasonry. His name is not mentioned. All the other names and types of names of gods and gods and idols, etc., <clears throat> you'll have their names mentioned. But the name of our Lord Jesus Christ is not mentioned. And if Freemasons have changed that over the last 40 years, and they're building in some form of ritual around Jesus Christ and his name, it will not be the real Jesus. It'll be a Mormon Jesus, a type of Jesus Christ, but not the real Jesus Christ. A Mormon Christ, if you like, came out of Joseph Smith's imagination. And it's said that Joseph Smith, the founder of Mormonism, himself was a Freemason. Rejected by the normal Christian church, he started his own church based on a strange vision he had apparently from Moroni, an angel, but it was a demon angel, a fallen angel. It wasn't a revelation of starting a new church called the Church of Joseph Smith and his latter-day dupes, deceived followers, acolytes. So the man was told at a pre-meeting meeting at that men's breakfast, you can't come into the breakfast today. You've offended an elder by telling the truth. Well, what we would call the truth, that elder called a lie, which made the man at the breakfast a liar, which made the elder a liar. And we know that Jesus had a problem with the Pharisees in all the religious groups in Israel, whether it was synagogues, the temple, on the streets, in the Pharisees' house, they were under a spirit of the God of this age that Jesus called the God of that age and the God of this age, this fallen age, the devil. The God of this age is the devil. It's a fallen age. But Jesus Christ is the God of the age to come. And indeed, he is the God of our age. In this age of us as the body of Christ, Jesus Christ is the God of this age that we're in as his church, his body of Christ, his body of his disciples, his obedient servants. That's who we are. We have his spirit. We have his light. We have his truth within us. And we are not ashamed of Christ nor the gospel. And in context, it is right for us to tell these people that if you are a Freemason, you need to come out of that occult, secret, shameful religion. And yes, you need to be born again. No true born-again believer can remain in with that occult group. So, if you speak the truth, in love, of course, it's truth in love, and they throw you out of their synagogues, their church buildings, their church groups, their church breakfasts, their new church moves of God. We were told once, Trevor and I, not to go to a, a formation of a new church. We were told not to go, not to go and help, because they had it very much in their mind. It was their church, their group, and they wanted to grow it. And it was like they were saying, we don't need your help. Thank you very much. We'll do it our way. Well, of course, the way of man is selfish ambition and vain conceit. And God lets them get on with it, forming their churches with their vision, using the scriptures they want to use, the focus they have, and calling it their church, whatever they want to call it. 
But of course, the true church is the body of Christ, not a registered organization, not of this world, not of this pattern of this world. So we're going to round, round this up, banned for telling the truth. Certainly that what, that's what happened to this man 30, 33 years ago. He was told, don't come. Not come, but don't mention that part of your testimony. Very clearly, the devil did not want him in the building and move that uh, Freemasonry elder person to be used of the devil to block that man from coming in. And Jesus said, they will shut the doors in your faces. And of course, when they shut the door in your face, when you're coming into the building to worship God, the living God, they're shutting you out. That makes them God, stopping you coming to worship God. Well, of course, God will not stop you coming to worship him in spirit and truth. So that makes them gods. And remember, Jesus, he was hated by the Pharisees, by the chief priests, by the rulers of the certain types of synagogues. He was hated for coming in without their permission, without their license to preach, with, without their permission to talk to, quote, their people in the outer courts before the meeting, after the meeting. And of course, Jesus, as far as we know, never went into the temple meeting, and he certainly didn't go into the, uh, the tent with the curtain. He didn't destroy the curtain to walk into the Holy of Holies, which he could have done because he certainly was the Holy of Holies himself. Fully human, but fully God. He did not tear the curtain physically himself. He waited. And when he was crucified, of course, you know, during that process, God himself tore that curtain from the top to the bottom, exposing the Holy of Holies. So, Father, we thank you, Lord God Almighty, that we will tell the truth in love led by the Holy Spirit. And Jesus, you've warned us, warned us about these last days, how they will treat us. And you've said, as they treat you, they've treated me. And we're going into places just to speak the truth in love. But it has to be your will, Lord God, Father God. We have to be in the Holy Spirit. We're not looking for persecution. We're not looking to go into uh, people's other religious uh, buildings in their religious uh, places of so-called worship. We're not looking to go into the religious places of other religions. Father, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Your will, Father, we submit. Lord, I thank you for every single man who came to the Caleb men's breakfast today. The unity we had in that room, the unity to be with each other in the Holy Spirit, to welcome each other, to encourage each other, and we stood as men of God to worship you with the songs, and we sang and worshipped you with songs, Lord God Almighty, Father, in spirit and truth. And we listened to Romans being explained to us. We discussed it in our groups. And Father, I know you're going to bless every single person who came in obedience to your will to join together in the Holy Spirit, in Christ, to worship you, Father, and to acknowledge this one Father over all, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. And we thank you, Jesus, for who you are, what you went through for us. And we thank you, Lord God, you've given us your Holy Spirit to guide us in spirit and truth 
one day of salvation at a time. We're going to leave it there. The light is failing now. It, the time is over. We'll keep praying for one another and recognize it's always one day of salvation at a time. Every new day is a new day of God's mercy. And I, we must become more and more and more merciful one to another, more loving, more compassionate, more forgiving for one another in the body of Christ. But also to people out there. And we must look for the lost sheep. The lost sheep. And just on the final note, there are found sheep, so to speak, churchgoers, even ministers, who are still under false doctrines, and doctrines of demons, heresies. And we must be patient with them, but we must be firm. No, that is not true. That's a lie. And look at recent videos. Annihilationism is a lie. It's a false demonic doctrine that takes away the truth that was saved from death hell and the lake of eternal tormenting fire imagine Sodom and Gomorrah not just one day of destruction one hour of destruction one moment of destruction but eternity of being destroyed fire raining down hell death hell and the lake of fire and god does not want one sinner to be lost and to end up there absolutely not and it's for you and me and us to tell people the truth yes the truth in love the full gospel the full gospel and the awful prospect of those who die outside christ but they can be saved by their full, genuine, permanent repentance today to be born again, to come under the blood of Jesus for cleansing. And once their human spirit is clean, the Holy Spirit will come into that clean vessel and indwell them and us with fire, the fire of refinement, for refining us, changing us from one degree of glory to another, the glorification that we heard about today at the men's breakfast. God is changing us within so he can use us increasingly to tell those outside the truth. You have to be born again. You have to be in Christ when he comes. And when he comes, you must be ready as the virgin bride. And just read the Gospels. Jesus has made it very clear. The virgin bride will be ready, the others won't be. Thank you, Jesus, mighty God, mighty God. I pray for every single person listening and viewing this and listening to this, they'll be listeners but hearers and doers, that they'll receive faith right now. Receive Christ, receive the Holy Spirit, receive Christ, receive spiritual gifts, including faith, as a spiritual gift. God bless you, obedient servants of God. Keep praying for us as we're praying for you. God bless you.